Rob and Hillary, uh, mm -hmm. thank you so much for your time today. I'm really excited to talk about Goosebumps. It's, well, it's a beloved classic, of course, for me and many others. Um, tell me a little bit about the series, about the new direction that you guys are taking um, with, the with the Goosebumps. You know, I think that, you know, in taking this property that so many people uh, now are adults who love, it was really important to be able to have a show that new audiences, you know, kids and their parents who love the books could share together. Uh, and so that's what we tried to do. And I think we achieved it. Yeah, it is. Uh, well, we figured this out on the on, back on the movie, but like, and it's obvious, but Goosebumps was so big in the 90s. And so beloved, those original fans are now in their 30s and 40s, and they still have fond memories of it. And so, you know, doing a new series, you have to, we wanted to, you know, make it appealing for adults who are fans when they were kids, um, uh, who may be parents now or not, and also make it work for people who know nothing about Goosebumps. So the show really kind of works on multiple levels. So how does that how does that conversation start? Because I mean, we have the books that are very beloved. Then we have uh, the series, super beloved. Um, my daughter, she her first exposure to Goosebumps was with the movie, uh, and so that's kind of what she thinks of Goosebumps. And uh, of course, then later she now she's doing the books and whatnot. And then we introduced her to the classics. Uh, how how do you make sure that you're able to? I mean, it just seems like such a tough task to try and please a, a various generations to to kind of bring them all together to, to the property? Um, I don't know. I think the first our first move was to please ourselves and make sure it's something we would want to watch ultimately. I think that's sort of the, the best advice for any of that stuff. Um, and then, you know, we had, a, there was just a lot of really talented people. Hillary ran an amazing room um, and people brought a lot of different perspectives. And, uh, you know, just, we constantly wanted to elevate the material. And I think, you know, one of the things I love about those Goosebumps books uh, was how they never pandered to, to kids. Like R.L. Stein wrote, you know, Stephen King level horror, but made it accessible to a younger <laughs> reader, but he never pandered to them. Like, and so I think that that's sort of, that's baked in uh, to what we were trying to do. And, and hopefully, you know, hopefully people respond to it. Yeah. And the Goosebumps books, you know, even though it might be a story about a dad who's become a plant in the basement, you know, there's always kind of a bigger takeaway from that. And so I think we really tried to tap into what is the kind of deeper feelings and fears that those Goosebumps books bring out. And that's kind of what we use to help drive us to tell a story that could be enjoyed from by adults too. Yeah, I, I really did enjoy the way that uh, you guys approached it. Uh, at first, I, I went in thinking, oh, these are episodic. And so the first episode kind of was like, what? Like nothing's really happened. What's going on? Uh, but once I saw it, I was like, okay, we're laying a foundation. This is actually growing. They're, they're still kind of episodic. There's a bigger story to tell with with this with this great cast, and I love how we're going back and forth time wise to like oh this is all happening almost at the same time with all these different elements from all these different books, and the next thing I know I was like whoa I was like, this is this is really really done very smart. Um, how when when it comes to storytelling, um, did you guys go through like the uh, maybe put them all on the wall and kind of picked which which of the elements like the haunted mask or maybe say cheese and die, which ones were going to work best for, for linear story altogether, or how did that work? Uh, those, those first sort of five, like the, the original concept when we were out and about selling the show was to uh, take five of the books. Um, and because we couldn't do an anthology, we didn't, we wanted to make it serialized. Uh, the idea was to map, you know, the book stories and their totems to characters that that existed in a town and and they would kind of cross paths for the first five episodes which would be essentially their origin stories for each character and then by the end of five uh they all come together and then the back five episodes would be this group uh trying to uncover you know what started all of this in the first place so that was always the the concept and then and then the say cheese and die and um, go eat worms. That type of stuff was 
once we had our characters figured out, we just went through those those first 60 books and just found the books that fit nicely with what we were trying to do. So each character is kind of tied to a Goosebumps title. Mm -hmm. And then those all kind of come together in a larger mystery, um, you know, when, that they're trying to uncover. And that was kind of the new addition that Rob and Nick brought was this big mystery concept and tying all of them together. Yeah, I, I really like that. I, I like the fact that it was, it was more of a personal story for each of them. And, and you know, they have this element that they need to overcome. But just like you guys are trying to um, um, bring together generations, I also really enjoyed the way that you did that in the series with the parents having to deal with it. And, and so in, in a way, it, it all ties in together. Um, but I did want to ask you about um, how nice was it to have uh, Justin Long really kind of almost anchor it and, and kind of give it that horror validity because he's we've seen him in like Jeepers Creepers, you know, in, in uh, Barbarians and a lot of other horror movies where it's like, if you see him, you're like, okay, this is going to be, a, you know, this is a horror, you know, horror movie. Um, and then also you have like Rachel Harris on there along with these uh, great young cast that, that I thought did very well. Yeah, man, the cast, like they elevated it. I, I mean, they, they took it to that next level. It's amazing. We got so lucky with the cast and, and yeah, Justin's incredible. I mean, we grew up with Justin from all the way, the dodgeball galaxy quest days, all the way to barbarian, which is like blew my mind. I love that movie so much. And his range is so incredible. And we just kept, you know, we just kept leaning into all the things he could do i mean he does like this incredible he, it's an amazing performance i don't know how many episodes you you've seen so far but he goes from comedy to terrifying to you know uh charming within second within a matter of seconds he second. can go from making you laugh to being terrifying which is quite a skill yeah it, it's amazing and yeah i, I Sorry, saying, using the word um, anchor, you know, is a good way to describe Justin just, uh, you know, on, uh, you know, on the set as well as on the screen of uh, just for all of the actors, which is the experience that he has in comedy and drama and that everybody could look to him and just kind of the uh, attitude that he had about making sure that everything was always the best version it could be, asking the hard questions. And that was such a good example to set for a lot of, of the other actors as well. Yeah, I, I think once I spent in the trailer, once I saw him, it, it made me even feel better about the series. It was like, okay, I was like, I can, I can, I get into this regardless. I, I'm a fan, <laughs> so it was going to happen. Um, I do have a question about your props, about about the way that some of these classic items were depicted. We see the Kugelhawk of Doom pretty early. Uh, the Haunted Mask was a little different than I remember. Uh, and uh, Slappy, of course, has gone through a couple of different changes. What were those conversations like in 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 production and create with with uh, creating some of these elements um, to fit your guys' mold? Um, well, we always kind of um, I, I made sure everyone looked at those original book covers, really, because there's not you know uh, there really is no sort of um, you know model sheet of what that stuff is supposed to look like other than those those book covers um uh which i loved and uh so we kind of we use that as a baseline and then and we did want to you know it is a contemporary modernized version of goosebumps and and it is it it skews older um and and the whole patina of the show is you know gritty and grounded and realistic so all those factors went in as far as the uh um you know the, the um uh, the slappy of it all without giving anything away. We, we looked at old vintage, real ventriloquist tummies, <laughs> which are so scary. So scary. Creepy. <laughs> um, and then the mask, you're asking about the mask, you know, the mask thing, uh, again, I don't want to give it away, but, um, you know, the, the, the character are, is in you know, trolls on the internet and, and the mask brings out, who she is on the inside. Uh, so really the, the thought process behind that is once the mask takes over, it's, it's, it becomes a sort of more memorable version of what we all remember as, as that cover, that haunted mask cover. 
Yeah, I think that's I think that's what blew me away about it because in the beginning, very beginning, so we're not giving anything away. You know, we go kind of through uh, through the basement and see a bunch of different things, and um, finally, when it came time for that episode, they they pick it up. I was like, oh, that's that's the mask. But then as it as it progressed, I was like, oh, this is okay. I was like, this is a, this is a lot smarter than I gave it credit for. I apologize. My this is me in my own head. I was like, I, I like this. I like this a lot because you know it it does. That's what it did in the book. That's what it did in in its special film that they had or two part episode. Don't remember anymore. I am part of that 35, 40 year old. I'm right in the middle. Right in the middle. Um, so I thought I thought it was done very um, very very smart. Um, well, do you guys have any? Um, it, with this series, uh, I think it's gonna. I feel like it's gonna do well. Um, would you bring back the same cast for for maybe a different experience, or would you take it away? I know I'm. I know I'm going ahead and go and go. Uh, go a whole different area, a whole different group of people having to deal with different uh, different objects and different book scenarios because there's there's a lot of them. I mean, <laughs> heck, if you guys do a horror, uh, a horror, just a horror land uh, series. I'm I'm a happy guy. I think we just want a season two, man. <laughs> we keep <laughs> we just hopeful the the show is successful and we can get a season two. But we have a Hillary and I have talked. We're not going to share it with you about what you know our designs on on season twos and we and and Nick Stoller and we just but you know we don't want to jinx it at the same time. <laughs> well, no. Yeah. We would be lucky to work with all of these actors again on Goosebumps season two or whatever it is, because it was such a pleasure and getting to see them grow. And I think audiences will get to see that too, even from the pilot to the last episode, how they embody these characters. And, and it was really a fun ride. And we did leave a lot of hooks in throughout the episodes uh, for everyone in the, all the cast for possibilities in the future so how, how fun is that is to be able to to make a series where you where you have where you kind of almost force your audience to pay attention I've, I've talked with other people before about other series where you can almost look away for a couple of seconds and not really miss out but i feel like with goosebumps very early on especially like the scene i'm talking about where you're panning around i feel i felt like oh no i really do need to pay attention because there's going to be something on the wall. There, there's some. There's a book here. There's a mask there. There's a camera here that is not supposed to be, or is there? Is there for a reason? And it's gonna and it's gonna uh, come into play later. I mean, that's the bet. I, I, I don't know that, that. I feel like that was all natural for us. I mean, we treated every episode like a movie. You know what I mean? And that's just sort of by nature of just movie structure is is foreshadowing and calling back. And that's just, so it's just the, it just, it's an organic thing in the show, but that is, it's all by design and it's all kind of mapped out in that way. Yeah. I, I, I think specifically I enjoyed you guys didn't pander to your audience. You guys just really let it um, happen naturally and you trusted everyone to, to kind of figure it out. So thank you for that. Cause a lot of times it's like, Look what's that? And it's like, oh, we knew, we saw it, we saw it. It's, it's okay. You don't need to, you don't need to tell us it's there. We we heard the door creak. Don't tell us. We we got it. Um, <laughs> uh, Rob, Hillary, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, as a big fan of the franchise, thank you for your work and congratulations on the series. Thank you so thank much. You.